So our first presentation today is going to be uh, by Dr. Cam Salent, um, early morning AFB sputum sample, myth or most necessary? Thank you. All right, thanks everybody for coming out. So here's what that means, myth or most necessary. So here's kind of the thought. In assessing a patient for active tuberculosis, a series of sputum samples are obtained for smear and AFB staining as well as for culture. And the recommendation, current recommendation per the CDC right now is at least three consecutive sputum specimens are needed, each collected in eight to 24 hour intervals with at least one being an early morning specimen. And the whole reason that's in bold is because we're really trying to figure out does at least one need to be an early morning specimen to make this diagnosis? So is it true that we cannot exclude the diagnosis of pulmonary TB if all of our sputum samples are obtained at a time other than the first thing in the morning? So that is our hypothesis. At least one early morning sputum sample is necessary in the microbiologic evaluation of active tuberculosis. So first thing we do, why an early morning sputum? So the first thing we do, go to Google, say why early morning sputum for TB? Our answer, of course, um, this is our very first uh, thing that pops up, early morning sputum, ideal microbiological, mycobacteriological exam for TB. Um, the first early morning expectoration represents overnight secretions accumulated in the chest, hence uh, saline inhalation-induced sputum. So is that the end-all be-all? Are we just saying Google says it's so, so it must be true? Maybe not. So why early morning sputum? Where did this idea come from? So the cough re reflex is suppressed while sleeping. So pulmonary secretions pull in the airways until the early first morning cough. Therefore, early morning cough gets the most concentrated sputum sample, or so the legend goes. Yes. So where did this idea come from? So as best as I can tell, doing uh, some, some deep, deep digging, um, the earliest thing I could find was from a journal called The Medical Record, it's a weekly journal of medicine and surgery, from October 1886. And the earliest thing I could find here was um, just an improved method of staining for TB and in the sputum collection uh, part of it, just said, uh, basically beforehand, it just gives what you're supposed to collect it in, and it said, this mixture can be poured into a wide mouth ounce bottle and given to the patient with directions to preserve it and the sputum first coughed up in the morning. But it doesn't really go on from there. It doesn't say exactly why that is, but that it's just best to do early in the morning. So then a couple years later, um, this is the first one that I can find that actually said why that should be the case. Um, so from the Medico Surgical Transactions in 1888, um, it notes, as others have remarked, the sputum expelled on waking in the morning represents the secretions that have accumulated for some hours in the larger air tubes. So I don't know who those others who have remarked, and uh, there weren't any references here, so we'll just have to go and say that these were the first people to put it on paper. So are we really saying that rules from 1888 still apply? Um, as you can see here, it's a picture of our 22nd president, Grover Cleveland. At the time, he was not also known as our 24th president. Um, but really, there's no, no real published guidelines that provide a citation for the, early, for the necessity of an early morning sputum. So in the literature that I was able to find, the only resources that, or the only references to where this idea came from uh, was from a study by Andrews and Radha Krishna published in uh, the journal Tubercle in 1959. So let's look at that. So in this study, they compared spot versus collection. So our two authors analyzed uh, several different sputum samples from 348 patients out of a pool of over 2,000 outpatients at a TB clinic in uh, Madras, which is now Chennai, uh, India. And so by design, this, uh, these analyses were performed on patients who had already tested positive for mycobacteria tuberculosis and at least one sputum sample, either by AFB staining, uh, the traditional Zeal Nielsen staining, or fluorescence microscopy. So that basically meant that every person's sputum that was tested, they knew they had TB in at least one sample. And then looking at all the different samples that this, these specific patients had produced, they tried to see if there was a spot versus a collection difference. And the definition of these different uh, sputum samples, a spot sample uh, is the one that's collected on the spot in the clinic. So the patient comes into the clinic, they cough, 
get whatever sputum they have, and then that was considered their spot sample. The collection sample was obtained at home over several hours. So basically they gave them a several hour period, said whatever you're coughing up, spit it into this, and then bring it in. So it was actually not just early morning, but <coughs> over several hours. So the results of this, um, so on a direct smear examination, meaning the AFB uh, stain that we are so familiar with, um, 461 of 696 spot specimens were positive versus 532, being a difference of 66.2 for spot versus 76.4 um, for collection, um, which was found to be statistically significant and less than 1%. On culture, um, spot specimens were positive at a rate of 89% versus 93.7% of, of uh, these long-term collection uh, specimens. And remember, these are patients who were deemed positive by either method. So even if they didn't have a collection specimen that was positive, they were still included in it if they had one smear that showed it. And so then it was decreed. In the types of case under investigation, collection specimens were more often positive than spot specimens, whether examined by direct smear or by culture. And because of this, it seems that everybody just took it and ran with it and said, early morning AFB, that is the gold standard, and we should be doing that. Uh, and it needs to be there, otherwise we can never definitively say that somebody doesn't have TB. And so the idea spreads far and wide. So here's just a few samples of places where it says early morning specimen, needs to be collected, including from the CDC, from the Association of Public Health Laboratories, of different journals all over the, part, all over the place, the uh, Mayo Clinic Center for uh, TB Excellence. So for simplicity's sake, an early morning sputum sample can be difficult enough to obtain in a patient setting. So what about those who are outpatients, who are just coming into a clinic with a quote-unquote tuberculous story? Is there really a way to, that we can simplify this process? Maybe there is. So here is uh, here's a study that was published in February 2013 from the Lancet uh, Infectious Diseases. And it was a comparison of the accuracy of same-day or front-loaded, same-day or front-loaded uh, microscopy, which are two words for the same thing, or uh, standard regimen microscopy. Front-loaded front -loaded meaning two smears are prepared from sputum samples obtained on the day of initial assessment, meaning the patient comes in, coughs twice in the clinic there, gets two separate uh, samples, or the standard regimen being, quote, spot morning or spot morning spot, meaning they show up to the clinic, cough, give their sample, go home, wake up the next morning, cough and give their sample, and then plus or minus an additional when they come back to the clinic that day to, to return it. And so the idea of this same day or front-loaded collection makes the clinic uh, essentially a one-stop shop, reducing the need for return visits. And uh, the thought is if they're positive there, they can do the smear really quickly. If it's positive, they can start treatment that day. So eight different studies included five articles, included from five articles, uh, compared these collection strategies in the setting of smear microscopy either light or fluorescence, um, and culture confirmed sputum samples. Um, and as you can see, the difference between the standard versus the front-loaded, um, there isn't any real significant, uh, statistically significant differences. So either from the traditional light microscopy, which is the ZN, which is the top, as you can see here, or here, um, versus the LED. So either way, not really any difference between either the ways that they were collected or the microscopy smears that were done. But what effect does the change really have on the cultures themselves? Now we know that the microscopy, the smears are no different, but what about these cultures? And so here was a little blurb at the end of that article, uh, which basically stated the incremental yield of culture morning sputum is about 9%, meaning that repeating a uh, morning sputum is about 9%, increases the yield about 9% is similar to that uh, reported for a culture of a second spot specimen, which is about 15%. So you're basically, any advantage that you're getting from a morning sputum can also be gotten by just getting a second spot specimen. So we don't really know. We don't know the effect that the change has on cultures themselves yet. So who is paying attention? Who being the World Health Organization in this uh, instance? They were very interested in the results of that meta-analysis. After all, they were the ones who actually paid for it. So in 2011, uh, the World Health Organization released a policy statement based on the results of this meta-analysis. And they said, uh, it has been shown conclusively that good quality microscopy of two consecutive sputum specimens identifies the vast majority of smear-positive TB patients. 
And on the basis of these findings, the World Health Organization recommends that countries consider switching to same-day diagnosis, especially in settings where patients are likely to default from the diagnostic process. So then we come to October 2017, published in Biomed Central Medicine, which is a research article. A spot sputum samples are at least as good as early morning samples for identifying mycobacterium tuberculosis. And so this was part of the uh, Remox TB study, which is just a study about um, using different antibiotic regimen, but they took the, the samples that were part of this and, and analyzed them. So what they did was uh, they had the, included the study participants, which had two or more sputum smears positive for a TB. Those are the ones who were included in it. And then they got different samples based um, from these patients who had the known uh, tuberculosis. So what they did is they had early morning samples that were collected by the patient at home the morning of clinic visit, and then a spot sample taken that same day at the clinic visit when they came to drop off that sample. So the analysis included uh, over 1,100 pre-treatment paired samples and then just less than 3,000 post-treatment paired samples. And all samples, all samples were tested by both light microscopy and by culture. And of note, the spot samples were produced while being coached by the study staff at the clinic. So it wasn't that they just came in and coughed and gave whatever they had. They were specifically taught, taught how to get the sample. So obviously there's a lot here on this slide, um, but the kind of takeaway here um, was that the pretreatment spot samples had a higher yield of positive AFB smears, um, which is statistically significant, less than uh, 2% and LJ cultures, which is the, the traditional Lowenstein-Jensen culture. Uh, but there was no difference for positivity uh, by the midget or the mycobacterial growth indicator tube, which is the liquid culture. Um, and so the conclusion that they came to was in the study of patients with smear positive TB, spot samples were found to be at least as good as early morning samples for identifying mycobacterium tuberculosis. This study further provides further support for the same day Two sample spot spot diagnostic process recently endorsed by the World Health Organization for programmatic settings. And then, of course, question that may come up uh, quick word on nucleic acid amplification testing. And in case anybody was wondering, uh, the timing of the sputum sample is not of any significance in uh, the gene expert testing. And basically, it's just a nucleic amplification test, uh, uses gene expert system, they run a, a testing and it doesn't need to be early morning if they never said it needed to be an early morning as far as I can tell. So is this a tradition unlike any other? The early morning sputum sample has been a cornerstone of evaluation for patients with active TB. But recently we're seeing that the use of uh, ster serial sputum sampling or spot spot without use of an early morning sample is just as good and it's sufficient in testing a patient for active TB disease. And in 2011, the World Health Organization even endorsed this idea in saying that that's their preferred methodology. Here in the United States, the CDC has yet to change its position. So the question I put to all of you is, is it time to retire the early morning sputum sample? And these are my references. I think that is a great presentation. I think this is the classic example of a medical myth. There was never good evidence for this in the first place. It's been propagated for 130 years, since at least, first turn, since yeah. uh, 1888. Um, so that's 130 year anniversary now. And yet it's still being used. It's still being advocated by the CDC. Um, it's still, I, I think until recently, the lab here was and maybe they still are, was rejecting specimens that weren't first morning sputum. Has anybody here experienced that? I talked to her today. She said what did they, they say? She said, I don't they think don't. that we rejected anything. Well, they, 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 know. they used to do that, because I've had specimens rejected that were sent in the evening. Does anybody have any comments? I know we actually did a study in the lab here about 15 years ago, because I was head of infection control then. And they actually did show that there was a higher positivity rate in the early morning sputums that were collected in this hospital and done in the lab here. Um, I don't, the numbers were small, um, but it certainly appeared that there was some validity to this. I think it's somewhat irrelevant now because with the gene expert, uh, all you need is one sputum at any time, I think. Right, and I think that that's part of 
the whole situation now has changed, that the gene expert um, <clears throat> really is so much more sensitive than the sputum AFB. In fact, I have one slide here, which I threw in, I didn't show you, about the gene expert. And uh, this is in patients that were culture positive for, so proven tuberc uh, pulmonary tuberculosis. Um, two a AFB smears and three AFB smears, um, the positivity rate was much, much higher, I think, was something like um, even with three AFB negative smears, the gene expert uh, was positive 57.9% of the time with one specimen and 70% of the time if you did two of them. So it's so much more sensitive. I think this is really, the AFB smear is actually almost becoming antiquated. But it, it's still being used everywhere, and worldwide it's certainly being used. Um, but I think that probably the only reason is maybe they have a better specimen in the morning, but if you hock up a big specimen at night, it's gonna be just as good, I think, as, some, as doing it in the morning. Um, I don't really know that the time of day makes that much difference. I was just gonna say that um, I think the other question that's raised is how, you know, we sometimes say six hours apart or other arbitrary uh, intervals between collecting these specimens. So I think what the, the spot data seems to show is it's actually just important to get more volume to the lab to look for these organisms rather than any kind of arbitrary rules. So it's really the quality and the quantity of the specimen rather than what time of day it's collected and that's probably why the morning ones occasionally are a little bit slightly higher yield. And I think that may also play a role with the, with the interpretation of the second study you showed where the spot one was coached. So I think right. maybe that also speaks to Dr. Jose's findings in this hospital was you know, how, how much of this is also just a function of um, is the respiratory therapist around, are they helping, and really getting a good quality sample. Yeah, and if they look at it and they see it's just spit, they say we need to get another one, whereas the patient doesn't really know the difference when they're on their own sometimes. Is it a myth? A first morning AFB is necessary to rule out pulmonary tuberculosis. How many people think that this is true? It's confirmed this statement is true. How many think it's plausible? How many think this is definitely busted? All right, so I think uh, I missed it. So it's busted? We all voted, yes. All right. I just want to want to make sure before we uh, enjoy our busted.